All right, for this walkthrough assignment, the goal that we're going to do is take our robot walkthrough that we did on a previous one, link it to the mouse movement so it's basically centered around the mouse and that we can use the mouse press function to make it so that the robot can talk when we are pressing the mouse, okay? So this is the assignment that we're going to be playing with. Um, in order to do that, you need to first go to your robot walkthrough. We need to co correctly duplicate this code. You cannot write on the old project. So we're going to go to duplicate. And then we're going to change this name to talking moving robot walkthrough. Okay, that's it. All right, make sure that it saves. Okay, so we learned in previous videos about push and pop as a way for us to limit when we're making changes to the size or how we're going to draw things. Okay, so ultimately what we want to do is we want to make this robot that we have that does not move with our mouse to start moving with the mouse. Okay, um, and this is a good example of using uh, push and pop and translate. If I wanted to do this manually, could I? Yes, it would take a lot of work though. Um, if I wanted to manually move everything over and I said I wanted you know this to move to the left uh, by 50, well then I'm going to have to start doing the math on that. Move that to the left, then I'm going to have to move this to the left. So 130 minus 50 is um, 80, and then this would have to move to the left, so this would be um, 170. Okay. And I got to do that for each thing, but if I'm doing that with the mouse, I'm still going to end up having to do um, some type of calculation. So the easier way is for us to actually start using push and pop. So I'm going to take the robot. I'm going to write push at the start of it, go all the way to the very end, and I'm going to write pop. Okay. All right. So it's not really doing anything yet, but as soon as we add the translate, we get to start seeing some cool stuff happening. Okay, so if I did translate and I wanted this to move to the center of the screen, I could do width divided by 2, height divided by 2, and now what do we see happen? Well, it moved. It took from the center. I pushed everything down from the center. Now this first rectangle is moving over 100 and down 100. Okay, um, translate normally, so if I didn't have this, what do we see end up happening? Well, this is how we are drawing everything from that point, that our origin, okay? We're moving over 100 and down 100 to get this rectangle. Here, we're moving over 130, down 150 to get this rectangle, okay, for the eyes. Now, with push and pop and translate, we can put specific points of where we want things and then center those things around there. So, um, if I wanted to draw these eyes in reference to here, I could do that and make it a little bit easier instead of having to do um, a lot of checking and stuff. So this translate, this is what we want to do. This is doing part of it, but it's not moving with the mouse because I have to set it with the mouse. So let's go ahead and do mouse X. Remember, this is case sensitive. Okay, so now it's moving with the mouse, but the height is still low. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to change this to mouse Y. All right, so now it's moving with the mouse and we get the exact same drawing that we had if I hover it at the origin point. So what I, what I want is um, I need all of these shapes to be moved um, over. So if I want this to be centered on the mouse, I could manually move every single shape a certain amount. I would have to subtract some if I wanted to go to the left or add some if I wanted to go to the right. But actually the easier way to do it would be use the translate here. So mouse X, if I just subtract from where my origin point is going to be, I can start moving the image actually to the left. So let's do 100. Look, that's actually pretty close. Now I'm at the edge. Let's do uh, 200. Okay, if I look in terms of uh, the X position, that is just about centered. Now let's do the mouse 
y. If I subtract, I should be moving the image up. If I'm adding, I should be moving it down. So let's go ahead and try, um, let's try 200 also. Okay, so that's actually pretty good right there. That's centered. I'd consider that centered. Okay, and that's moving with the mouse. Okay, all I had to do was change these values. I just moved where that origin point was to the left 200 and down 200, and then it's giving me what I want. Okay, um, for how I am drawing this in terms of my mouse. So I didn't have to change any of this. So that first part uh, of making a move around the mouse, we have that. That's, that's good. Now we want to make them actually start to talk. Now if I locate the mouth and I put fill, let's do fill black, and you want to make sure that you're finishing everything with semicolons, I notice it's not just doing the mouth, it's also doing the antenna, okay? And if I actually didn't have the pop and push on here, um, I'd still get my code to run, but it's going to actually color every single shape that I made in the draw. Um, but with them on, it's only doing the shapes that are coming directly after the fill before it will reset. So I have the mouth and then the antenna which I don't want. So yeah, again, if I need to separate stuff and have it only affect one thing, I need to use push and pop. So I'm going to do push and pop around the mouth. And now it's only his mouth, but it's not doing anything yet. So I have to um, start to build that up. So I do want this to react to the... Um, mouse um, and I want to make it so that I can have his mouth increase in size. Okay, so if we're looking here, these are the values that we want to play with. So let's make it maybe smaller just to see what, what it's doing. Okay, that is staying on that left side. That I don't think that that's what we want. I think we want, if we're looking here, we are talk, making him talk centered. Um, so we actually got to kind of change some stuff. And if I make this number smaller, um, the positioning of that rectangle, it's kind of going up because that's how it's sized. So I don't want this, which brings me to, um, a difference in how shapes are drawn. Circled shapes are drawn. So here I got another project just to kind of show you. Circle, if I'm putting out width divided by 2, height divided by 2, that would be the center of the screen. Circles are center-drawn shapes, okay? The exact center of that circle is the exact center of my canvas, okay? Rectangles are top-left-drawn shapes. So even though I'm putting the same x and y value of where I want it to start at, it's by default dropping, drawing from the top-left corner, okay? So um, we actually want to change that. And if I go into how I'm doing that, like when I'm drawing rectangles, right now by default, the X and Y is the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, but it's the top left corner, okay? So um, in the references, you could type just the word mode and you're going to get a whole bunch of different options. What these are are different options of things that we can do for P5JS to have it act differently. I can change how I'm doing the colors, I can change how I'm drawing my ellipse, can change how I'm drawing my rectangles, angles, instead of using radians, I could use degrees, um, how I'm drawing my images, um, all of these. These are just ways that we can get it to perform how we want it to. Okay, so let's go into rect mode. And there's actually a number of different ones. We can type the code rect mode and then all in caps, the option that we want. Now we default to the first two values being the X and Y of the top left. Um, that is rect mode corner. That's what it is defaulting. Uh, rect mode corners with an S, this would be, um, if this was the top left corner, then this would be the bottom right corner. If this was the top right corner, then this would be the bottom left corner. It is drawing this, the uh, square, the rectangle in between those two points. Um, radius and center are basically the same thing. Uh, except for um, radius and center, the X and Y, that is the center of the shape. And then I can give the full width and the full height. The radius, this is giving the half width 
and the half height. Okay, I can read more about it here. We see that the default mode is corner. First two parameters are the upper left corner. Okay, and then the third and fourth are the width and height. If I'm doing corners, it's the caddy corners. Um, for drawing at rec mode center, which this is the one that we're going to want to use, interprets the first two parameters as the shape center point, just like a circle. While the third and fourth parameter uh, are its width and height. Okay, so let's come back to this. Now, um, if I go into my setup and I say, you know what, I want all my rectangles to be center, and I got to make sure that I'm typing center L in caps, let's look at what's happening. Everything got thrown off, okay? Because I don't, I already have it drawn. I don't need to make everything center, I only need to make certain things center uh, um, for how it's drawing. So instead of doing it there, I'm going to uh, control X to cut that out. I want to go just to the mouth and I'll be inside the push pop um, and then it will only affect the mouth. Okay, so now the mouth we can see is center drawn. That means that this 130 and 250 is where the center of the mouth is. So let's move it over so that it's centering. So let's, uh, we want to move that over so i'm going to increase this number let's go to 200. okay that's better um and let's move that down some so let's go to maybe 300. that's a little bit too much 275. there we go okay so I now use this. Now this is moving from the translate. I'm moving 200 from that point and 275 down from that translate point. Okay, so now I got my mouth. Um, it's center drawn, which makes it so that if I bump this down to 100, it... All right, so when we change the numbers, uh, now we should see that the mouth is staying centered. Um, and we can resize and we can make it talk. So I can have, you know, small little mouth. I can do much bigger mouth. And we can play around with this to make it look like he's talking. Okay. So we need to be able to change these values. Okay. Which means that they can't be hard numbers. Uh, hard coded would mean that this is something that is not going to change. It's going to stay at 150. So I actually want to change this to a variable. So I'm going to come up here to above all my functions, and we're going to use the keyword let to create a variable, and I'm going to do mouth width, um, and then I'll do mouth height. Okay, now writing, separating when I'm using the let, I can, I can do that for multiple variables. This right here is the same as writing it each separately mouth width and let mouth height okay these are the exact same things um, i'm just saving having to type let for multiple of these uh, variables by separating it with a comma instead of finishing it as a statement okay so there's no difference um, between the two okay so now that I have that, um, if I want to start using it, I need to look at what are my default values. So for the mouth right now, I have it as 150 and 50. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, mouth width. So I'm inside the setup in between the brackets. Mouth width is 150 and mouth height is at 50. Okay. So again, it's not really doing anything, but if I go down to the mouth, I change this. This would now be the mouth, mouth width. This will be the mouth height. Okay, so again, it doesn't really look like we did much of anything, but now if this changes to 50, it's changing the value on the mouth. This is growing. It's changing the value on the mouth. Okay, so that's our default. But what we want to do um, is make it so that we can resize it as we 
um, are clicking on the mouse. So then let's go back to the references and we want to find where that is in the references. Okay, so a mouse press, a key press, hitting the space bar, doing any of that stuff, those are called events. Um, they do not happen um, continuously like the draw. The draw happens 60 times a second. I don't want it to change 60 times a second. I want it to only change when I am pressing the mouse. So then I'm going to go ahead and click on the events uh, category and see what we got. Okay. So we've already been using mouse X and mouse Y. That is event based, um, but that's holding those variables. Um, there are a lot more that we could use, but mouse press seems like this would be the one that I actually want to play with. So mouse press, let's go ahead and click on it. We can see some examples. If we press the mouse on this um, example, what is happening? Well, it's a function, but they're saying if um, the value is at zero, then it's going to be black. Otherwise, um, or if it's black, then it's going to be white. Otherwise, it's black. So every time it's clicked, it is changing the color. Okay, so this is also a function like setup and like draw, but it's going to be linked to the mouse and it's event based. Okay, I can't just type what I want. I have to actually pick. There are certain functions that are already pre-created for us to use. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, um, for this, the mouse button variable can be used to determine which button has been pressed. If no mouse pressed function is defined, the touch start function will be called instead if it is defined. Okay. Um, so there may be a little bit of differences in what you're doing, but basically, um, when we call this, just like this examples, okay, I don't have to pass in any perimeter uh, parent, uh, parameters. I just have to say what I want to happen. Okay, so let's go back here um, and let's first link this up. So I need to make sure that I'm not typing inside of any function. No function can be inside of another function. So I have to locate the end of the draw, which is right there. Um, I'm going to hit enter a couple times and function mouse pressed, making sure that I'm paying attention to casing. The P is capitalized. Now, um, let's go and for understanding, I'm going to do a console.log so I can have some code show up here just to make sure that it is working. And um, I am pressed. Okay. All right, so now it's running. I have auto refresh turned on. So sometimes that's useful. If you don't like it, you just got to click, shut that off and then click play. Now, each time I press the mouse key, I'm getting this message in console saying I am pressed. Okay. It's happened three times, four times, five times. I can spam the mouse key and it's showing up a bunch. Okay. This, I need to link with the mouth width and the mouth height. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So when I press, I want to start changing that stuff. So mouth width. Um, if I just changed it to say 50 and the mouth height to, um, let's say 20. If I did that, and then because I don't have auto refresh, if I did that, when I click it once, oops, it shrunk. But now I click it a whole bunch more times and it's not doing anything. Because now, once I clicked it, I changed that value to these and I'm not changing it to anything else because every time I click it, I'm re-putting it in here. So this is where we want to use the um, random. Random is pretty useful for us to be able to generate random numbers. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, scroll down. Okay, there's a number of ways that we can do this. Um, random takes either zero, one, or two arguments. If no argument is given, so no parameters are given for this function, it's going to return a random number from zero up to, but not including one. So that's decimal numbers. Um, so that could be kind of like a percentage. If I get 0.99, then that's like, I, you know, threw like a 99 in there. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. If I put one argument, then it's going to start at zero and go up to, but not include that number. So if I put five, it would do zero, one, two, uh, three, uh, and four. It would not do five. 
Um, this is a floating point number, so if we don't want it to end up having, we want them to be uh, whole numbers, then we got to make some changes. Okay, if I put two numbers in there, though, it will go from that starting number all the way up to, but not including, the second number. So, like my min and my max. That's basically what we need to do. That would be my lower bound and my upper bound. Okay, um, so let's look at that real quick. I want here my mouse width. I'm going to say, you know what? I want um, maybe that 50 to be the lowest value that I want and that 150 to be the largest value. Now if I click, um, each time I'm clicking, it's picking a different random value between 50 and 150. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for the mouth height, random, um, and I'm going to do like maybe smaller amounts, maybe 20 to 50, and let's see if that looks kind of like it's talking. Hey, how are you? Okay, um, so that looks all right. We could play with this, and he is talking um, by putting these random values. Okay, we could tweak them a little bit. Um, there are different ways further in the course where we could have it be one or the other, but right now this will work. Random, picking a random value from um, you know, 50 to 150, that looks right. Random value from 20 to 50 for the mouth height makes this look pretty good for him to be able to talk. Okay, and then we're able to still move. So this is the walkthrough. You guys have gotten to where you can take a drawing, you can have it move using push and pop and translate. We use push and pop to um, prevent other things from getting colored. And then we use the mouse press button with the random function to make sure that we could have him talk and move his mouth um, and change the sizes. Okay, and the only way that we were able to do that was we had to change the rect mode to center. If I didn't have this on the rect mode, then it would look like this and that looks stupid. Okay. So we do want to use rect mode center, but we had to make sure that it was inside push and pop around the mouth so that it was only affecting the mouth and not the rest of the um, drawing. Okay. All right. Make sure you guys are turning that in. Good luck. Have fun.